It's Thursday, April 11th, 2024. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, before I start the video today, uh, I wanna give Texas Silver a shout out today. Check out his channel. He is interviewing Bill Holter. He will be dropping that sometime this evening. Should be a really, really good interview. I think he's gonna have um, multiple uh, parts of the video, but he's releasing part one this evening. So check out Texas Silver. Show him some love. Give him a, a view. Give him a, 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 a subscription. Um, make sure you subscribe and check out Bill Holter because Aaron's going to be asking Bill Holter some really, really good questions. Should be a really uh, good series starting this evening. So check out Texas Silver. Uh, let's talk about what happened today uh, in the markets, what's happening to this god-awful economy that people are being just decimated daily now. Um, Fed officials today, as the uh, markets were struggling, uh, some Fed officials came out today and said that we would see rate cuts later in the year. Markets reversed course. Markets across the board were up. Dow Jones was down a few points, though, but everything up. But things were, were very stagnant today or down and then reversed course. And it's always, uh, it's always one of these little tricks, right, where yesterday uh, the, the markets just got absolutely crushed. And I'm thinking, what's going to be the news today to get the markets to, to go up? What, how in the world could the markets even be in the green today? Well, again, it's the same old song and dance. They pull another rabbit out of the hat and they have some Fed officials come out and say, hey, don't worry, there's going to be rate, rate cuts this year. So just hold on. But... Um, are we really going to see rate cuts this year? I think they're just putting more hope out there. There's nothing definite now. Uh, many people now are coming out and saying that there is going to be zero rate cuts. So I think what the Fed should be doing is maybe uh, winding down their, their balance sheet instead of uh, putting all this hopium out there and, and these promises that they know they're not going to be able to keep, they should be cutting down this debt on their balance sheet. They're not doing that. They're not going to do that. And that means you're going to see more and more inflation. And that is why gold continues to go up. As I make this video, gold is up around $42, $3,293 an ounce. Silver up 50 cents, around $28.50. Uh, again, markets up, uh, bond yields up. Uh, it's incredible. Everything is just going up. So how in the world are they going to be able to cut rates? I don't see it. Uh, this one from Yahoo Finance. Credit card delinquency rates were worst on record in February, study shows. All stages of credit card delinquency, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days past due, rose during the fourth quarter of 2023. Nearly 3.5% of credit card balances were at least 30 days delinquent, past due uh, by the end of December, and it's getting worse. And it says in the article here, uh, signs of stress. It says the share of cardholders making minimum payments jumped 34 basis points from the third quarter. The average APR, according to this article, is 20.75. I've seen it near 23%. It says here if you owe $5,000 in credit card debt, which most Americans owe at least that, uh, at the current APR level, it would take 279 months and $8,124 uh, in interest to pay off. Uh, this is unsustainable. People are now just turning into debt slaves. They, they are never going to get out of this. In fact, you can, you can pretty much bet that the APR in these cards is going to go higher. So the interest on this debt is going higher meaning that these people are going to go deeper and deeper into debt. Uh, with some of this data or data, however you want to pronounce it, uh, this is disturbing. It's very, very concerning. The average American is in big trouble. Uh, I don't know how they're going to get out of this. Uh, I think people are, are really, really going to be feeling a lot of pain here as we head deeper into 2024 uh, and, and into next year. USA Today, residents of the state pay $987,117 in lifetime taxes. Guess which one? You guessed it, New Jersey. The average American pays $524,625 in taxes in their lifetime. Do you think that's a little too much? Uh, I would say that... Um, 
I'm going to pay a lot more than that. And I'm not seeing a lot in return of what I'm getting uh, for paying my taxes. Uh, what is the average American getting for paying their taxes? What are you getting in return? You're getting better infrastructure. You're getting a better standard of living. You're getting better roads. You're getting a better quality of life. You're getting cleaner water. You're getting a safer neighborhood. What are you getting for this money? I'm getting absolutely nothing. Everything I see around me is deteriorating, and yet I'm paying more taxes than ever. And I wish that I would only have to pay $524,000 in a lifetime in taxes. Uh, but whatever you're paying, a lot of people out there paying a lot more than me. Uh, but what are you getting for your money? Are you, are you satisfied with what you're getting? We're getting wars. We're sending money and munitions and drones over to other countries. Uh, we're paying for people to come here from all over the world. We're feeding, housing, giving them debit cards. That, that's where your tax money's going. And I, I, I find it just shocking that we've come this far and this is where our tax money is going. I, I, I find it just um, repulsive, uh, I, I guess would be the word to say, to see where your money is going where my money is going. It's not going to help the hungry, the poor, the needy, the infrastructure. It's not going to, uh, uh, for, for securing your cities and your towns and making you more safe. It's not going uh, into something positive that's gonna help you down the road. Really, really sad. Comment on any of this that you wanna comment. Comment on down below uh, as we uh, sit here Thursday, 97 degrees out. Uh, just a, a, a beautiful day, but there's just so much happening right now. Mortgage rates climb again. And this is on Fox Business. 40, 50% of people's income is going, this is before taxes, before taxes, it's going to pay mortgage and rent. Somebody please explain to me how this is sustainable while everything around us is going up. Taxes, uh, home repairs, health insurance, auto insurance, food prices. Nobody even knows how high some of this stuff has even gone because it's, it, it, you can't even keep track of it at this point. It's going up so fast. You go back three years ago and compare grocery store prices to where they are now, uh, they're probably up 30%, I'm guessing, higher now than they were three years ago. Uh, some people may say a little less, some people may say even a little more, but uh, everything off the shelves at your local Walmart, a, a Target store, your, your, your pharmaceuticals, everything is getting more expensive. Just to live day to day is getting more expensive. And I don't know how you can sustain a real estate market or a real estate economy where 40 to 50% of people's incomes are going to service a mortgage. How, how do you sustain that? You are one little accident away from big trouble. You miss a payment, then you miss two payments, you're done. You're not coming back. You're, you're eventually going to be in foreclosure and you're going to lose your house. High inflation, this is on Fox Business, is costing Americans an extra $1,000 a month, 1069 more than three years ago. The typical household needed to pay $227 more a month in March to purchase the same goods and services it did a year ago. So we're now up nearly $1,100 more a month to live at the same level you were three years ago. You're not living better. You're living the same if you spend $1,069 more a month. How many people can do that? Most people are spending less and they're having to live at a lower level now. Their standard of living is not what it was three years ago. Their standard of living is going down because they cannot afford to keep it where it's at. The middle class can no longer afford to stay middle class. Many people have fallen out of the middle class or they're going broke trying to stay in the middle class. Real estate expert explains how housing problems are getting worse. This is on Fox Business. Mitch Rochelle, managing director at Madison Ventures Plus, said it couldn't be a worse time, uh, a worse time of year as mortgage rates hit their highest level since November. The average 30-year fixed mortgage sits at 7.37%, according to uh, 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 Mr. Rochelle, Mitch Rochelle. 7.37%. Average house is over $400,000. Do the math. You come out here, I mean, you're, you're getting a cookie cutter for $900,000 now at 7.37%. Rochelle predicts rates will likely increase. I've been saying that for quite a while. I still believe we're going to see double-digit mortgage rates here in America. I would not be shocked 
or surprised to see 10 plus percent 30 years. But Barbara Cochran uh, last week came out and said, or a week or two ago, said, this is a great time to buy a house because the Fed is going to lower interest rates, mortgage rates are going to go down, you can refi. And when they do all this, home prices are going to soar and you won't even be able to get a house. So you better go buy a house right now. Uh, I'm sure your typical real estate agent, at least the ones I've seen on social media, telling you the same thing. Buy now, refi later. Why would, like, think about that. You're going to refi as possibly mortgage rates go up they could go up 9, 10, 11%. You're not going to refi. You're going to be in big trouble. Uh, they are advising that people take some very, very serious risk here. I advise that you do not. But these people are heavily invested in real estate, real estate agents, not all bad. There's some good ones. But most of them, let's face it, if they don't sell a house, they don't get paid. They don't make the mortgage on their house. Mortgage brokers, mortgage, these mortgage agents, same thing. They don't do loans. They don't eat. They don't make the mortgage on their house. So of course they're going to tell you it's a great time to buy a car. Go to a car lot today. They're piling up, but they're going to tell you, they're going to sell you the FOMO that, boy, this is a great time to buy. You won't get this car in two months. We're selling out, you know, this and that. You go ahead and believe that. The cars are piling up and the houses are going to continue to pile up. I saw a house yesterday in the South. It was reduced 901 thousand dollars now on the market for 899 a price reduction of nine hundred and one thousand dollars uh it's been on the market for or the reduction has taken place uh yesterday three days prior hasn't sold if it was a incredible deal that house would have been bought up instantly as soon as the reduction happened not happened it's available today for four days now and it has not been bought up even though the the price reduction is 50 percent that's telling you how overinflated these prices are that now they're cutting prices half, half by half and the house still isn't selling. Rents are up 5% year over year. Uh, Rochelle says that things are spiraling out of control. And I would say to that, we need to see this market, these markets, uh, these bubbles collapse. The only way that the middle class or first time buyers are even gonna ever have a chance to buy a home is if prices come back to earth you need these markets to collapse. We, we need to know the true value of these assets. They are completely overpriced. We're gonna see it in the bond market, the stock market. We're seeing it in commercial real estate right now. We're gonna see it uh, in, in, in home real estate, uh, new and uh, uh, also in existing home sales. We're going to see prices come way down. I'm not going to be shocked to see things collapse. We need this to happen. If it doesn't happen, if it keeps going the way it is, nobody's going to be able to buy a house. First time home buyers are done. Uh, people who are locked into 3% aren't going to be, able to be able to sell their homes until they lose their jobs, get a divorce, get sick or die. And then who's going to be able to buy these homes? Uh, we have a very locked up market. The market is just locked up, locked up right now. And until prices come down, this thing is not moving. I, I can tell you right now, in my humble opinion, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody anything because I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody can tell you anything because nobody knows for sure. But looking at the data, looking at where all this is going right now, I think most of us would agree we are not going to be seeing two and a half, three percent mortgage rates anytime soon. In fact, I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime. That being said, the only other option is prices come down. That's the only thing that gets this, this market moving. You cannot have people uh, you're, you know, putting 40 to 50% of their income towards a mortgage payment, completely unsustainable. Too many people losing jobs. People's credit is being decimated. When you start missing credit card payments, that is messing up your credit. No, but no bank is going to loan you money if you can't even make a credit card payment. You don't have a job, they're not making you a credit card payment. You get divorced, you don't have a, a two-person income, you're probably not going to be able to qualify to get home. All this is happening right now. And as we get into the summer, we're going to start seeing how this all unfolds. Wall Street Journal, the hidden costs of home ownership are skyrocketing. Wall Street Journal talking about that today. Uh, here's another one today from Market Watch. Fed's next rate move is a hike, warns Larry Summers. This is a warning from Larry Summers. He says uh, that I see no case for a cut in June, the former U.S. Treasury Secretary. He said, look, again, things could change, but as of right now, 
he does not see it happening. In fact, he's putting down the probability that we may not just see a cut, we're going to see a rate hike. And that's probably what really should happen. But look, all this is worthless if the Fed does not start cutting its balance sheet down and the U.S. government cannot stop spending money, the rate hikes are meaningless. And this is why they're not working. First off, inflation is much higher than they're telling us. Secondly, the government is, is just spending so fast that these rate cuts, they're meaningless. And the Fed balance sheet is still overinflated. It needs to be cutting this balance sheet way, way down. So inflation is not going away. When you look at we're, we're 509 for a gallon of regular at Arco today, 509. The other day, I reported 4.99. It's up a dime in, 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 in 48 hours, up another 10 cents. Gas up, oil up, silver up, gold up, Bitcoin up. Everything's going up. This is not a good sign. And th this is all happening right now in April. So next month in May, when we get the April CPI, I think you can already figure out that it's not going down. We're going to get another CPI report where it's going up. Rent's going up 5%. So I, I don't see it going away. Uh, I would prepare for big trouble, ladies and gentlemen. And you better prepare for this. Reuters, FBI concerned about possible coordinated attack in U.S. The FBI is growing more concerned about a more coordinated attack following uh, what just took place in Russia a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, they're, they're saying that we could see individuals or small groups inspired by the war in Gaza uh, fulfilling uh, assaults right here on American soil. Think about what this would do. First off, think about what it would do if they went after the infrastructure, they went after the grids. Uh, you got to think about that. What would you do without power? What if you could not use your cell phone? Uh, what if your cell phone was down for a week? You couldn't do transactions. ATMs down, no transactions. That's why you better have some cash put away. Have some assets like gold and silver put away. You got to be thinking outside of the box right now. The people that were laughing a couple years ago now, many of them are actually taking the advice and doing this. Now, people aren't laughing. Now they're getting concerned. Now they're worried. And they should be because when you're concerned, when you're worried, when you panic a little bit, you begin to take action. And so maybe uh, instead of people, I was watching some TV show yesterday, I think it was um, uh, on Fox. And they were talking about, well, there's no football right now. And so, you, you know, uh, American men are going to have to watch this sport or that sport. Maybe they're watching hockey. And so wh what are they going to do until football season starts? Well, while people are sitting on the couch watching sports, waiting for football to start, think about all the Chinese coming over here, military age men. What are they going to do? Are they going to open up uh, laboratories here? Are they training at facilities here? What are they doing here? So while we just sit on our couches and, and watch, you know, adult men play games, there are adults from other parts of the world coming here with very, very bad intentions. They want you to watch TV. They want you to watch sports. They want you to watch football. They want you to, over here paying close attention to sports because they have an agenda and they're going to fulfill it here. So we may get what we deserve, ladies and gentlemen. I, I cannot believe how people are not outraged with what is coming over here. Why are they here? Who is paying to get them here? Where are they going? What are they doing? Um, what information are they sending back to the Communist Party? But uh, we're going to see trouble here. There's no doubt about it. And then think about what it's going to do to markets, what it's going to do to the U.S. economy. Uh, probably, I would probably be more concerned on how I'm going to eat and my security and how I'm going to survive. Uh, markets will be absolutely rack, ra rocked, rattled, um, you name it. Uh, they will be absolutely decimated when this begins here. The economy, people will be scared to go out. They'll be scared to go to dinner. They'll be scared to go to a theater. They'll be scared to go to a mall. This will be really bad. So something I think everybody better really be thinking about. Uh, a couple more articles here. Why are gold bars uh, sales surging at Costco? Well, I think it's pretty easy. I mean, $200, $200 million a month in gold bar sales at Costco. That's uh, pretty astonishing, uh, especially, you know, when they're selling $1.50 hot dogs, and yet they're selling 
uh, $200 million in 24-ounce gold bars next to the hot dogs. Uh, you've got turmoil, war, economic uncertainty, dollar collapse, um, you name it. Uh, many of the things I'm talking about right now, uh, where else do you put your money? Where else do you put your money? Yes, you can, you can go to Bitcoin and, and you know more power to you, but if the lights go down, the grid goes down, we begin to see cyber attacks. The only thing that matters is what you're holding. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. I'm not telling you not to buy that stuff. Uh, you can do it. Be diversified. Uh, I wish everybody the best of luck. It's not a competition. I, I'm, I'm in survival mode, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am in complete survival mode, economic, physical, spiritual. And I want the most surefire insurance I can get. So I invest in my training, I invest in gold and silver, things that I can get to physically, that I can put in different locations, things recognized in every country on planet Earth, whether the power's on, off, cyber attack, no cyber attack, computer, no computer, it works. Extremely liquid, can, can be, be converted in, uh, into any fiat currency anywhere in the world. I can go to any grocery store in the world, any farmer in the world, give them fiat currency if they want that. If fiat currency goes bad, what else do you have? You have gold, you have silver. I don't think a farmer, I, I, I don't mean to rattle anybody's feathers here, but if the currency goes bad and the lights go out and you go to a farmer, say in uh, Texas or uh, uh, Mississippi or Indiana or Illinois, I don't think he's going to take your Bitcoin. I think what he's going to take is gold and silver. Denver to spend $89.9 million dollars in 2024 on services for migrants, cutting budgets from all city agencies to fund programs. Denver introduces a nearly $90 million newcomer budget plan. How do you feel about this, especially if you're in the Denver area? Love to know your thoughts on this. Maybe you think it's a great thing. Let us know, comment down below. Maybe this is uh, really a good thing. Uh, but they want, it says, they want to move people to independence. And I say this, what about the people here in America uh, that also want to move to independence, but they can't because they're broke. They're not getting any help. Their businesses are shutting down. Uh, they're tapped out on the credit cards. They lost a job. Uh, they can't keep up with inflation. They've tapped out the retirement. They just cannot survive. How do they get to independence? So let me get this right. People from other places can come here and we're going to spend $90 million in Denver to help them become independent. But if you are from here and you live in Denver, you're not getting any help. Wow. Wow. $25 million has already been spent in the first quarter of 2024 on this plan. Wow. What a slap in the face to the people of Denver, a slap in the face to every American, in my opinion. Look, I love all people. I don't care where they're from. Uh, but if you just come here, uh, without doing it the right way and then you're getting all this free money and benefits and free food and free health insurance i don't agree with that whatsoever i don't care if you're right left in the middle it's not even political it is what's right it is what, what is wrong it's wrong right le left right. It, it what matters is the people here always come first if i went to let's just say i went to spain uh, i would not expect to be uh cutting in line uh, to the people in Spain. If I moved to Germany, I, I wouldn't be cutting in, in front of the line in Germany. If I moved to Mexico, uh, I would probably say, hey, I better learn the language and I better get in line. Uh, we're not cutting the line. Uh, obviously, Mexico is going to look out for their people first. Spain looks out for their people first. Germany looks out for their people first. Why are we not looking out for our own people? I, I just don't get it. I have no problem with immigration. We, we allow 1.5 million people, people a year to legally come in here and, and immigrate. But we are being over inundated, uh, flooded. Uh, the, the infrastructure of this country is not set up for it. The economy cannot handle it. Where will all these people work? AI is coming in. It is going to replace millions of jobs. Companies are, are cutting uh, jobs right now, layoffs, right? Because of the economy. AI and the economy, we're gonna lose a lot of jobs. Businesses shutting down forever, gonna lose a lot of jobs. Where are tens of millions of people going to get jobs in order to house themselves and feed themselves? I, somebody please explain this to me. Again, doesn't matter if you're left, you're right, you're in the middle, it doesn't matter. This has nothing to do with politics. This, what this has to do with is what's right, what's wrong, and loyalty to the people in this country first. I don't get what in the world is going on here. And I'm gonna finish with this last one because this really, uh, this really concerns me. This on the hedge. We're going to lose a major war. U.S. Navy deletes photo of ship commander shooting rifle with backward scope. 
we are not prepared. We are not as strong as you think, America. Uh, this is not very comforting to see a, uh, a commander literally shooting a rifle backwards. Uh, I am losing faith in just how strong this nation is. Uh, economically, uh, I know it is nowhere near as strong as they've been telling us. And they've been telling us how strong our military is. But boy, we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of issues with our military that tells you and I it's probably not as strong as they're telling us. So I think the rest of the world um, understands that too. They know that our currency is in trouble, our economy is in trouble, the leadership's in trouble, our military is in trouble. We just talk. We just completely build it up, talk every day. This is great. Military is great. Economy is great. The consumer is strong. Everything's great. And I guess if they believe that, they say it enough times, everybody believes it. Well, the Chinese aren't believing it. The Russians aren't believing it. I'm not believing it. You're not believing it. A commanding officer of the Arle Burke class guided missile destroyer, the USS John S. McCain, was recently photographed shooting this long gun with the scope on backwards. I'm gonna leave it there today. Why are people buying gold? Why are they buying silver? Because everything they're telling us is a big fat lie. Be safe, be praying for this country, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, God bless every one of you. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Talk to all of you soon.